morning stampers welcome to post Christmas holiday helper I decided that I'm not quite ready to give up on the holidays yet this year so maybe the tree is put away and maybe some of the presents are put away and we're enjoying the you know memories from our day but um, yeah I'm not giving up on Christmas yet so Really, we have until 12th night, right? Until Epiphany, and that's still the Christmas season. So I decided that today I am going to show a project um, that's a little bit Christmassy and a little bit New Year's-y, and uh, has some really cool tips, plus one bonus one that I just figured out, which is why I'm one minute late in <laughs> coming in this morning. So morning, Trish, hi, Sue. Um, let's see, other note, notable items. I was thinking about this video this morning um, since I had a few days that I didn't get to talk with you and I just wanted to point out that this year is like no other, uh, at least in recent memory, and so if you are finding um, that you're not done with your Christmas cards, hey, it's a free pass this year. You could probably send them in February and people will be like, oh yeah, of course, why not? <laughs> so um, I totally think you should just keep working on your Christmas projects and enjoy them and enjoy sending them. Um, and yeah, Trish says she loves crafting Christmas all year. I totally agree. I actually have a friend who had a tough year this past year and uh, I know that she loves Christmas, so I sent her an occasional Christmas card all year long because why not, right? <laughs> all right, so good morning, Tanya. Let's get crafting. I'm gonna flip you guys down here. And the um, project that I'm gonna show you is a, um, a fun window card. So let's see, uh, where'd my sample go? Oh, well that's interesting. I can't find my sample card. Um, let's see. I guess maybe I won't show you my project before I get started. Oh, here it is. Uh, you can, I don't know if you can tell from my voice that I walked away from you for a moment, but. Um, okay, so here is, here is our sample card. All right, you guys ready? I'm gonna give you some tips on putting this together. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a piece of um, Missy Moonlight cardstock. Um, and I picked this color because it is a great match for the, um, in Good Taste Designer Stories paper. This is the one that has like the wood grains and the tile grains and all that kind of stuff. And so I thought that um, as we're making sort of a scene card, uh, it would be fun to have this be the floor and this be the um, wall. And to go with our card, we of course need our cat punch. All right, so I've got my cat builder and I've just punched him from, hmm, I think this is soft suede actually. Okay, so I punched him from soft suede. And uh, this is gonna go here. Now, before I um, started today, I took my um, Stitch Shapes uh, square punched and, uh, or die, and uh, went ahead and punched this background. This is actually Stitch Shapes framelits, if you don't have them, are probably the one um, that I use absolutely the most regularly of all my dies. If you're only gonna have one stitch shape die set, this is a good one. You have um, a number of each shape. There are circles, ovals, and squares. I think there's three of each shape in different sizes. And I picked this one for my window. So ran this through and um, have this set up here. But I'm not gonna stick anything down yet, and I'll show you why. Now I use the Trimming the Town Designer Series paper which is um, no longer available, so sadly, but if you are gonna do this project um, without this paper, then you could go ahead and um, just stamp a scene. But what I wanted to show you is that the other nice thing about working with dies is that you can place your um, die to kind of eye what the scene is gonna look like. So I find that a little easier. Yes, you could just cut a square, but sometimes um, the mind's eye and the actual eye are a little different. So. I cut this one out here, ta-da, and through the magic of television, have this to show to you. Okay, so I'll set that aside. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, set up my wallpaper or tile here, and kind of, I'm just gonna hold it in place, and I just realized I have my little piece of, there we go. I'm gonna set it in place, and um, go ahead and put some adhesive on here because we are going to oops, pop our winter scene in the window. So again, if you didn't have the designer series paper, you would just stamp your winter scene, which 
Of course, we have lots and lots of supplies for that. Um, and set that down, okay? All right, now to go over that, um, we need a, a mullion. I, I meant to look up the word. Um, anyway, the little cross pieces that go across your windows. And so I'm gonna show you a trick for making those um, with your uh, trimmer. So I started with a piece of paper that I know is bigger than I need for my window. And I am going to line this up um, here uh, at, it doesn't really matter where. So I'm gonna pick a line. I'm gonna pick this line right here. So I've got it lined up right here and I am going to go most of the way, then pick up my trimmer blade and then go the rest of the way. So basically have a line with a little cut in the middle and then some space. So now what I'm gonna do is move my paper over um, to halfway between the lines, which is an eighth of an inch. And I'm gonna run that again. And I'm gonna avoid the middle because it's just really hard to line up. So yes, you can use your ruler, but I don't feel like working that hard. <laughs> so now I'm gonna line this up so that it kind of lines up with one of our lines. And I'm gonna go most of the way to the center. And then I'm gonna pick up and go past the center. And then I'm gonna move this over another eighth of an inch and go Oops. Okay, apparently I cut that part off. <laughs> um, that's okay, that's what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna set this back on here and use the little handle here. I need to put my blade above first. Um, make sure you use this little handle to hold your paper. It works really well and um, it will hold your paper, so. Okay, so I have that mostly um, set and then all I'm gonna do is take my paper snips and snip the rest of the way to the center so that I have my little um, window panel to go in the center. And then I didn't um, scoot, I didn't adhere the uh, the wallpaper, the wall, get it, wallpaper, ha <laughs> um, Sorry, <laughs> cracked myself up. I didn't adhere the wallpaper because I still wanted to um, go ahead and put this um, little window piece underneath it. So I am going to bring this back here and yep, that's good. I knew it was longer than I needed. So I'll trim a little bit off each end. Be careful you don't trim too much, that would be sad. And now I'm gonna set that across my card and I am just going to pop a um, dimensional on each corner of it. I guess those aren't corners, those are sides. All right, so now I need two more dimensionals down here at the bottom to hold down my paper and now I can go ahead and peel these and now we'll put our wall on top of our card, okay? Just like that. All right, now we need some floor. So I'm going to adhere my floorboards. Let's see, we can get these mostly lined up there, yep, okay. All right, so we're coming together here and then I um, have my kitty and I'm gonna turn her or him, I think this way, okay? So she doesn't cover up all the trees. I don't really want her to be in the center exactly. Yeah, that's pretty good right there. So now we have our two trees showing and our kitty. And then I thought we needed kind of one more thing here um, to add to our card and so I decided to use the um, winter woods die and the in or in the woods dies framelits um, and the winter woods stamp set here which is perfect because it has this um, greeting that's thinking of you this season and I have this here because I want to show you my magic trick all right so this die set is fabulous um, it has both the outline of the tree and the um, tree that is going to go here uh, Okay, sorry. No window. What did you say, Sue? No window sheet. Oh yeah, you could totally put a window sheet in there. <gasps> Good idea. Ah, see, this is why we craft together. You guys are the best. Okay, so yeah, like Sue says, put a window sheet up under here. Uh, I didn't, so I'll let it go. But I'm gonna use these two dies here, and I want our tree to be in scale with the um, 
with the cat. And so I don't want to put the tree on like this because then it would be like the cat is like three times. I mean, I suppose you could have a Charlie Brown tree, a tiny one. But I decided that what I would do is just make the tree look like it is coming off the edge of the paper so that the tree could be like all the way up to here. It could be gigantic. You just don't know because um, it is <laughs> on our um, project only in part. So um, I just went ahead and cut this on the edge of the die. And then uh, this layer here that has all these little pop-ups on it, you could um, spend some time popping up these pieces if you want. But honestly, I kind of um, am happy with it just the way it is. So I'm gonna pop some adhesive. Now, I know from making my first version of this card that this top part is going to need just a little bit of green lid glue. I'm almost out. I actually decimated my green lid glue supply making calendars, so. Oh, there we go. Okay, and I always say with Greenland glue, if you can see it, it's enough. So that doesn't look like a lot, but you can see it, so it's enough. And I'm gonna layer this on top, and it just really adds a lot to that tree there, okay? All right, now we are not finished yet, because we still need a greeting for our card and some embellishments, right? We stamp, layer embellishments, that's what I always say are the three steps to making a card. And so we've stamped, we've layered, we actually didn't stamp, um, we used paper piecing, uh, but we um, need to add our greeting to this. And so from the um, Trimming the Town Designer Series paper, which is sadly sold out, um, it had these greetings in here that you can get uh, cut down into little pieces. And this one says, de notre famille la vôtre, um, which is en français, when my French is terrible. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this one anyway. My daughter actually, for her French class in high school, um, had to make some Christmas cards and they're sending them uh, to a um, nursing home care center, a senior center, uh, someplace in Montreal or Quebec, I think. So anyway, um, she was looking for French stamp sets, so we, Found this paper. Now, if you already have this paper, then woohoo for you. Um, if you don't have this paper, uh, there are of course a billion great greeting sets that you can use. But either way, this trick is a nice um, one. So when you want to seam paper here, um, they can um, easily be seamed with a Stampin' Dimensional. And so think about that um, rather than trying to like fussy glue things down. So I'm going to, let's see, I gotta see this one from this side so that I can get my greeting kind of where I want it. I think I want it here. There you go. Okay, so from our family to yours, and then I promised you embellishments. So I'm gonna grab these, all the trimmings embellishments, which are um, also on the year-end clearance, and I linked them in the video description, the supplies for all of the things here that I've used, except for that trimming the town paper, um, are linked there. So if you're looking for the cat punch or the window or the dies that I said are the ones I use the most ever, um, or these cute little snowflake embellishments, um, they're little white dots, and I think they make Excellent cartoony type snow, so I need an odd number, so I'm gonna put five of them on here. There we go. So there is our snow, and then I am going to open this card up because we're gonna need a greeting inside, and this is the miraculous thing that is my late Christmas gift to you. So. If you have old stamp sets, um, like this one, Winter Woods, so this was before Stampin' Up! changed to the Cling Mount stamps. Ah, oh, thanks Trish, I'm glad you like it. Uh, this was before, which means that every time I use this stamp set, I have to flip it over. I don't know if you can see on the back, but there's like strips of adhesive on here um, because I always take my glue and I, you know, seal glue onto the back so that this will stick to my black. So. In the catalog, there is this cool thing called cling adhesive sheets. They come like this as a pack with more than um, I need for one stamp set, clearly. They um, will last a long time. And I finally pulled them out this morning and look, look, I put them on a stamp. Now I know some of you guys are rolling your eyes because you've already done this a zillion times, but look right here, it sticks now just like a cling stamp. I could not be more excited about this in case you couldn't tell. So I am going to ink this up and stamp my thinking of you this season. And then this is going to get glued inside our card here. So thinking of you this season. All right, uh, so yes, you do need them, Sue. Let me show you how they work since we're kind of set with our card here. 
So what I did um, was, first of all, read the directions. So when you get these, if you're like, I can't remember what Meg said, just read the directions. That's what I did. So they come in a sheet like this. And the sheet, if you can see it, is like a little bit, it's like all these little label pieces. Um, so what you do, first step is to, I like the language in this, begin by collecting adhesive sheet and rubber stamp. <laughs> so I've got my adhesive sheet, I've got my rubber stamp. Then leaving adhesive on sheet, remove one or more paper backing strips. Now, when I did this stamp, I just did three across here. You don't have to cover your whole stamp. Um, I'm going to try not doing that and we'll see how it works. And then you're going to remove the paper backing from the strips that you need. So this is the trickiest part. I've already pre-peeled most of these. I found that if I started on a corner and it didn't work, then I um, went back and grabbed it in the middle. And what you wanna do, oh, see that one didn't work, um, is you want this sheet to stay. Let's see how it works to so put it back down there. All right, always with my snips to hold things in place or your take your pick tool. Okay, all right, so I managed to put it back, but it's much easier if you don't peel it off in the first place. Um, and Faith says she re remounted her entire collection. That's awesome, I, I'm kind of a, um, do it a little at a time person, I think. So, all right, so I have the back of my stamp here, which doesn't stick to blocks very well unless I add some adhesive. So I'm just gonna press my stamp on here. Do, 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 do. You have to make the sound. That was in the directions too. You have to sing a little song. Do, do, do. All right, and then you just peel it up. All right, there we go. And then I can trim these little bits that are on the side. So if you saw my scissors before and wondered why there's stuff on them, um, now you know. I'm gonna try and keep my fingers off the clingy part of the stamp as much as possible. Grab these two little bits here and voila. Okay, we need a black. Let's see how this works. Oh, I have one handy from my sneak peek blueberry set. <gasps> oh my gosh, look at that. It's so cool. Okay. Sorry, I got, my, got kind of excited about that there. Uh, that is really fabulous. So um, again, you don't need to do this if your um, stamp set is more recent if, or stamp collection is more recent. So Photo Palmer obviously stick great on their own and the new Kling stamps um, stick great on their own. This is if you just have stamps that were um, from before the Kling period and need to go ahead and uh, add some extra sticky material to the back. <gasps> I just want to, un oh yeah, this is great. And those strips don't separate or anything and I still have tons of material left. So you could probably get away with covering less of your stamp, but this is a tree that I use a lot. So I'm happy to, uh, happy to have it on there. And look, now it sticks in the case and everything. Oh man, look at that. All right. Uh, so I think, um, yeah, I know I, I have been meaning to order them. Trish says she definitely needs them. Um, I've been meaning to order them forever and, uh, just kind of not gotten around to it. So apparently there are 168 strips in the package. Let's see how many sheets that is. I don't honestly think you need to cover as much of the surface area as I did, but, um, why not? Let's see. There must be one, two three, four, five, six sheets in the package. So um, cling adhesive sheets, one, five, two, four, five, two. Um, anyway, we are easily amused. Isn't that the best, right, Faith? Uh, yeah, so um, I hope that you guys will um, think about continuing to send cards this season. It is Monday, make a card, mail a card Monday. Um, think about sending a card to somebody today who um, could use one after the holidays and uh, have fun with this little window trick. Um, it's, it, you could stamp your background for wallpaper, you could stamp your floor or use one of the um, wood grain uh, plank kind of floorboards, all kinds of different possibilities for this, but hopefully um, that trick for the window frame will work well. And then be sure like Sue said to add your window sheet over there if you uh, want to make your window look super windowy. So. All right, guys, um, I said that I would uh, tune in this week between Christmas and New Year's on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so I won't see you tomorrow, um, but there are a billion, well, 58 um, holiday helper videos and Love and Stamp Studio tours that you could go back and uh, check out if you missed any of those, and then I will see you on Wednesday with a new project. So 
Happy stamping, you guys. Um, hope your holiday was fabulous last week and over the weekend, and I will look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Have a great day.